So here we have a sign. It has a weight of one kilonewton with the center of mass at G. So the center of mass, center of gravity, different terms for it, but there it is. And so this is the sign. What do you think the weight is a force acting on the sign? W. It will have a magnitude of one kilonewton. It'll, if you look at your X, your Y, and your Z, it's basically zero in the I, zero in the J, negative one in the K, isn't it? Isn't that what my weight vector looks like? Just straight down in the negative, because this is positive z going up, it's the weight's negative z going down. All right, so that's my load on my sign due to its weight. It's body force. Determine the x, y, z components of reaction at ball and socket joint A. What? Ball and socket joint A. This is the representation of the ball and socket joint at A. So think about this. This is a rod. It's connected here. If somebody wanted to take B and just move it this way or move it that way, would that ball and socket joint at A oppose that movement or would it allow it to go? It would allow it to go. How about if I moved it up toward the positive Z or down? It would allow it to go. It wouldn't have a reaction to oppose that impending motion. But if I grabbed it and tried to pull it away from A, guess what? It would develop a reaction to hold it back. How about if I tried to lift it in the positive Z? It would develop a reaction to hold it back. If I tried to pull it in a negative, it would develop a reaction to pull it back, to hold it back with negative forces. So that's what the, the ball and socket does. Okay. And then we have... You're supposed to solve for the X, Y, Z components of the reaction at that ball and socket joint. That's a big hint as to what you're looking to solve for. And the tension in the wires B, C, and B, D. So out at B, there's a wire going up to C. That's the wire B, C. And then B to D is another wire. And basically they're in tension. You're supposed to solve for those. Can you get a free body diagram for this problem? And can you clearly label the unknowns and then count them. How many unknowns do I have to, that they're asking me to solve for? Okay, I'm going to pause, walk around. All right, so what we're looking for is to come in here and put a non-zero reaction. And since I don't have a good sense of which direction it's going to be, I'll just put it in the positive x and call that ax. And I'll put it in the positive z and I'll call that AZ, and I'll put it in the positive Y, AY. Now it's a little tricky because look at, uh, it's overlaying part of my illustration. Maybe you move it back here, but then you got two vectors with the base or the starting point applied at A, and then the other one at the head. Th these are complicated issues in life, aren't they? So anyway, this AY, you have to deal with it. And then you have the tension in the cable coming up. So maybe I put the force from B to C as a vector, and a force from B to D as a vector, and then I, I represent here force B to C will be the magnitude of the tension as a scalar times the unit vector from B to C. That, that way I develop it as a vector, 3D Cartesian vector. We've done that before. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's call this the tension in the cable going to C. And then this unit vector, you get good at it. Something I, J, K, and then I'm going to normalize. It's like I'm getting a displacement from B to C. So what is the change in the X? Is it going to be positive, negative in the X? And how much? Positive, one meter, change in the X. How about the change in the... Y. Going from B to C, negative two meters. How about the K? You'll be moving from B to C. What will you be moving in the Z? Positive two. And then you've done maybe a few of these. You go, oh, one squared plus two squared plus two squared. That's nine. Take the square root. Bingo. Right? We're getting better at this all the time. And then the force 
In 3D, that force vector from B to D will be the tension in D times the unit vector going from B to D. Very similar, we have the tension in D, and then we got to get this unit vector that's going to be in the X. It'll be negative 2. In the Y, it'll be negative 2. And in the Z, it'll be positive 1. And then, hey, that's a square root of 9. So that's a 3. All right. So at this point, I got a free body diagram, got a good representation of my tension force vectors acting at the tip out at B. Let's get our equations of equilibrium. Notice that I uh, emphasize that some people count your unknowns. You have five unknowns. You get the most of them will be six equations you'll find that one of those equations will be pretty simple, like zero is equal to zero. If I did the sum of the moments around the y-axis, that's going to be my simple equation. Does this force B to C induce a moment around the y-axis? No, because it goes through the point B, which is on the y-axis. How about this force uh, B to D? Does it induce a moment? No. It <laughs> so how about AX, AY, or AZ? No. How about the weight? It, well, the it line of action goes right through the y-axis. So basically, the, the equation for the sum of the moments around the y-axis y is 0 equal to 0. It really doesn't help me. So that's my kind of dud sixth equation but I only have five unknowns, so the rest of the equations are going to be really important, aren't they? Let me do this. I'm going to jump to the other page. This is the clean free body diagram. Tension in C, the tension in D, we already represented those as forces. I'm thinking of the magnitude of that tension. Here is the answer for each of those. And how did we get that solution? You had to do the sum of the forces in the x equal to 0. That's going to give you an equation. The sum of the forces in the y equal to 0. Sum of the forces in the z equal to 0. The sum of the moments around the x axis equal to 0. Sum of the moments around the z axis equal to 0. That's our five equations with five unknowns. Let's just get our equations, and then I'll leave you to solve for them. Some of the forces in the x, we'd have ax, right? And then we'll have this component of Tc plus one-third of the tension in the cable C, all right? And then it'll also, for the, 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 the force going from B to D, with the tension in the cable D is going to be a negative two-thirds tension D equal to zero. So I have that one equation will have three unknowns in it. Likewise, we get the equation for the sum of the forces in the Y, AY minus two-thirds tension cable going to C minus two-thirds tension in the cable going to D Another equation with three unknowns. Then we get the sum of the forces in the Z, AZ at the ball and socket, plus two-thirds tension in C, plus one-third tension in D, and don't forget the weight, which is downward. This is W, all in the Z, and it's negative 1K. So that's why the negative signs there. Okay, some of the moments around the x-axis. Well, you'll get the magnitude of the weight with its moment arm distance of one meter, and it makes it want to rotate in the negative sense around the x-axis. And then you'll pick up the two-thirds of the tension in cable C. What does that do to? That's due to the, um, the component uh, in the um, the Z in the Z direction going up right you decompose TC into a component in the Y pulling back and the X and then the Z going up in the in the Y does not induce a moment around the X axis this one does not the X component does not only the Z component so two-thirds 
of TC. What's its moment arm distance? Two meters. Does it make it want to rotate in a positive sense or negative? Positive sense. And likewise, we do uh, the one third of the tension in the cable D. That's the, the, the lifting part of the tension in the cable to D. And uh, then it has a moment arm distance of two meters, and it's also positive. All right. And then we did the, some of the moments around the Y axis. Let's go to the Z axis. For the Z axis, that's this axis right here. The weight does not do it. Uh, the Y component doesn't do it. It's only the X component of both TC and TD. So what you pick up is the one third of TC times two meters. That'll induce a, a rotation in the negative sense. And then the two thirds TD times two meters. That'll induce a rotation in the positive sense there. These equations uh, work a little easier. You could take these two equations, combine them, and then solve for TC and TD. Once you do that, you can come back and solve for AX, AY, and AZ. But here are the answers. I'm going to stop here. If you have any questions for me, please see me right after class.